Hey, Shalom, we the real Hebrew Israelites coming to you week in and week out, prophesying the truth and the return of the Heavenly Father, which is prophecy found in the Holy Scriptures. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baha Rechakwadash, Yahweh is the Heavenly Father name, who the world ignorantly and willingly calls Jehovah. Yahweh Shai is the Son name, who the world ignorantly and willingly calls Jesus, that is the biblical Hebrew names that the Lord and Savior spoke when you read Acts 26. He spoke Hebrew, the pure Hebrew, not the Hebrew that the Jewish people speak today, for that language is not pure. That is not the Holy Tongue. Baha Rechakwadash means in the Holy Spirit. The way we're able to understand these prophecies and parables of the Holy Scriptures, apply it to our life with a proper understanding, and worship the Father in spirit, truth, sincerity, and charity, and labor for our salvations, and bring forth fruit, be for repentance. Double honor to our elders and apostles, great millstone, the holy prophets and apostles and men of the Lord, back to them the reincarnation, standing in their lots in the end of days, as the Scriptures say will be. Shalom to you brothers that listen and believe and tune in and um, fight for your salvation as well. I just want to go into this lesson, man. Basically, uh, uh, street preaching, which is the ministry, which we were commanded to do, man. Okay? You know, here at Great Millstone in Chicago, a branch of Great Millstone, starting with the elders and apostles on down. And hey, we just do what's commanded of us, man. We go out and teach. We go out and preach the word. Bring forth fruit, meat for repentance on camera and off camera, man. So I'm gonna pull out a couple scriptures, man. Uh, hey, it um, uh, it boils down to just going out here warning the people what's coming, man. Showing the people, uh, you know, there is hope and this was commanded of us. Just the whole duty of men, you know. So uh, I'm gonna play this a little bit and then I'm gonna pull out some scriptures. Coming to you week in and week out, prophesying his truth and the return of the Heavenly Father, which is prophecy. First and foremost, we want to give all praise and glory and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekar Kodash. Double one is our elders and apostles, great millstone, the holy apostles, prophets and men of the Lord, back to dead and reincarnation, which is word out truth, sincerity, and charity. And uh, with that, man, we just go hop right in the spirit, man, and we going to do what's commanded of us, man. Come on the highways and bad ways, speak the words of prophecy, man. That's what it is. You got a stretch for three points? Uh, you got it? Go ahead. It's Jeremiah 30 and 7. Right here. That's right, man. That he that's going to be saved is the elect. Those that's trying, that's striving in the midst of this wicked, perverse, crooked generation that's going down the highways and byways, not just going out there, but truly repenting, man. Okay, truly put off that old man. Those the ones that's Lord willing going to be saved and dare to the end and keep the word of his patience. It's written. And the scripture says, for whatsoever things are written aforetime, ready for our learning. Okay. This is a book of prophecy, okay? The scripture said we're going to go in slavery, and it happened, man. It said we're going to be sold to our enemies. It happened. We're going to be delivered from our enemies, but it starts with what? The street preaching, the street ministry. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, but, uh, hey, it's only given to a few to understand and see, okay? Because the scripture says the rest was blinded. Now, I just want to grab the scripture real quick. This is a book of Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God would do nothing. So he, he the top dog. He the most high. He ain't got to do nothing. And his only begotten son, he did what he had to do. He fulfilled his task and his duty and his ministry. Everybody know that. All nations know our Lord and Savior walked this earth. But what they don't tell you is his name and how you look. But the scriptures do. If you have the heart and the ears to understand and perceive. It says, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So the Lord is revealing his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And what's the secret? His name, his will, and what he coming back to do and save, man. He come back for salvation for his people, the elect of his people, because two-thirds got to die and the one-third will be saved as it is written. And he come back to destroy all of the nations, man, all the wicked, all the nations that had us in slavery, that did wicked, cruel things to us, man. Okay, so the Lord ain't doing nothing. He's going to reveal that to his prophets. The prophets is the mouth of the Lord, and they're going to come out and speak it, man. Okay? 
And that's what the street ministry is about. And I'm going to grab this real quick. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. Who was that talking about? The Israelites. Can you read up? It talks about the valley of dry bones, man. And the Lord showed the prophet Ezekiel a vision that hey, these dry bones will live again. The dry bones talking about Israel. Okay, because we all fell away of our law, of our heritage. We all discontinued. We all took on heathen customs, lived like heathens, man. And you got our people still scattered amongst these heathens today that we got to prophesy to and speak to and go out, okay, to give our people hope and do the work. It says, and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Okay, and it's just a... Uh, this is just a branch off, man. Okay, this one our this one our camp branch off from the main camp. And not to mention you got brothers in town, okay, from different cities. You got different camps set up in different cities, man. Okay. But nevertheless, let's go into the scriptures more. It says This is Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So that we giving them warning, we let them know what's to come, what to do to get right so you can be on the good side of the Lord. Okay, because this is a gift, man. The Lord chose us. We didn't choose, you know, we happy to water, okay? Our spirit prayed for in a way, you know, I always want to know the truth and serve the God the correct way. But nevertheless, hey, this is a gift. The Lord opened our eyes to see this and understand this. And guess what? We go and teach what was taught, man. We don't add to the word. We don't take away. You know, just keep it simple because the Lord commanded us to do this. There's Luke 14 and 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, to come in, that my house may be filled. So the Lord compelled us. Okay. So got that word compel. It says to drive. Right. To drive, man. You know, to drive, to force threats, right? You know that word, hey, so, hey, guess what, man? Scripture says, through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So going out and telling these people, look, if you don't get right, the Lord's going to destroy you. And we showed them a bunch of scriptures. The Lord ain't no respective person. We showed them a bunch of scriptures. All this famine, this destruction that coming, we show them a bunch of scriptures according to prophecy. If they, they don't take heed to that, they're going to die in their sins. That's what the book of Ezekiel is going into. We warn them. If they take heed, they're going to be saved. But if they don't, the blood is on them. Okay? So, yeah, sometimes we may get loud. You know, we may use rude speech. But we give you the 100% doctrine. We're not lying to you. We're not charging you. We're not misleading you. This is the true labor of love. Sometimes love can be harsh, man. You know, and it is what it is. So it says, compel them to come that my house may be filled. So the Lord, that's all the Lord asks, man, was commanded of us. This Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So yeah, we out there loud. Yeah, we out there passionate. Yeah, we out there compelling the people. Persuading them through the terror of the Lord. Letting them know, hey, the Lord, this is the same power that flooded the whole earth and only saved eight souls. And repopulated the world. That's the same power that turned this back against his nation that rebelled. Okay, and look what happened. It's the same power that gave his only begotten son because he loved the world because he was merciful, but it pleased him to bruise his only begotten son. This is that same power. It says, and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. So when we was in the world, we saw that the prophets going out, or we met the prophets going about our day-to-day -day life. And we were showed our transgressions, we were showed our sins, and we repented, and we called on the name. We brought forth fruit, meat for repentance, as it is written. And we tried, and we strive, and we kill off that old man daily. And when we, uh, when we, uh, solid on a subject matter, when we solid in the scriptures to the point we could go out and teach according to our lot, we do that, man. We teach what we know. We teach what was taught, okay, and got precepts to back it up. This Proverbs 1 and 20, wisdom cries without. She uttered her voice in the streets. That's what we're doing. She cried in the chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gates, in the city. She uttered her words, saying, what's well, the chief place of concourse? Well, here in Chicago, we'd be downtown, okay, on State and Adams, okay?
but really just state. Okay, you can take the State Street bus all the way from 95th all the way down to Chicago downtown, man. Okay, take the Cottage bus, the King Drive bus, the train, the Green Line, the Red Line, and guess what? You're going to see the profits in the highways and byways in the chief place of concourse, which means the top, because you got all Israelites down there. You got Israelites down there that may look like another nation, but they're not the other nations. They're Israelites. It's all there. We telling our people to get right before the destruction come. We telling them their transgressions and their sins, because guess what? We was once in that madness, and we know we can speak on it. We can judge, therefore, because we was in it. And we tell these other heathen nations, they're judging. Yeah, you're, you're showtime. But guess what? Hey, we're next. You know, forever. It says, she cried in the chief place of concourse and the opening of the gates in the city. She uttered her words, saying, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. And that's what it is. Our people are simple, just what we, just as we were. They delight in scorning, just as we were. And fools hate knowledge. When we was in the world, we hated knowledge. But when you get corrected, when you get reproved, you love correction. You love reproof and you increase in knowledge. Why? Because you fear the Lord. You don't fear men. You don't feel what the government, what the rulers of this world can do. We feel God. So therefore we get right. Therefore we keep the law, statutes, and commandments to our best ability. That's why we lift up that standard and we uh push that standard. That's why we get right, man. Because we feel the Lord. We don't want to be simple. We don't want to delight in scorn. We don't want to be them fools, okay? It says, turn you at my reproof. What's reproof? Correction, man. Chastisement, punishment, rebuke. And how you get corrected, rebuke? And the Lord ain't doing it. We just read it. Surely the Lord God would do nothing. He revealed his secrets unto the servants, the prophets, the servants, the prophets, the men of the Lord that's back in the reincarnation and the lots. They're going to correct you. They're going to rebuke you. Some harsh than others. That's just what it is. We all men. It says, Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. That's going back to that Ezekiel, man. The Lord a, a prophesied and a breath entered into them and we lived and stood upon our feet as a great exceeding army. That army you see is us on the highways and byways, man, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's in the scriptures. We ain't getting up guns and uh, prepping for doomsday, man. All we always doing is preaching his word. The scripture says we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. The Lord is going to fight for us. We ain't got to do nothing. The Lord is going to feed us and guide us through this destruction, through this famine, through this pestilence. We ain't got to do nothing but push this word and be right. Not hypocrites, not liars, not deceivers, man. It says, because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have sat at not all my counsel with none of my reproof. So you had, guess what? Israelites to this day, they don't care of the Lord calling. They don't care of the Lord stretching out his hand. They don't care of the prophets out there. That's the Isaiah. Say, my people doth not know, they doth not consider. Okay, so what the Lord going to do when he's extending his mercy? As he has been, he's been doing this back then before his only begotten son came on the scene. He was doing it when his son came on the scene, after when his son left the scene. And even to this day, man, when we stood upon our feet, when that breath, which is that wisdom, entered into us, man, that's that breath, that wisdom. Okay, it's in the book of Wisdom of Solomon. It says, I will also laugh at your calamities. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as a desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall ye call upon me, but I will not answer. Then shall ye seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of Yahweh. They were none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. And what's the counsel? These scriptures first and foremost, but how do you understand it fully? A man have to teach you. That's order. Start with the elders and apostles on down. When the Lord and Savior came on the scene, he established order. Well, who? Peter being the head. And the disciples and apostles after him. It says, Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Hey, so the Lord is going to give you over to your own destruction. But verse 33 is a key word. But whoso hearken unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear and from evil. So if you hearken unto the Lord, you're going to be good, man, when a day to come. Okay? This is Micah 6 and 9. Yahweh's voice crieth unto the city, and the men of wisdom shall see thy name. So we see the name. We understand it, man. It says, hear ye the rod and who have appointed. And the rod is for correction, man, because we all sin. So the Lord is correcting us, man. 
Because we, we was in this once, we was once in this category, man. But guess what? The Lord's correcting us, and we take heed unto that correction so we can live, man. And that's really what it is, man. I just want to make a quick lesson, man. That's why you see the prophets on the highways and byways, man. That's why you see all these videos on YouTube, man. Because it was prophesied. We are part of prophecy, okay? And there's more prophecy to be fulfilled, but we must endure to the end. We must take correction. We must correct ourselves and examine ourselves daily. And when you solid on something, we understand that, that the Lord reveals something to you. You got precepts to back it up and it's sound doctrine, wholesome words. You go out and teach that, man. You make videos. All while staying right in this midst of this wicked, perverse, crooked generation. So, Lord, we hope that's was that a fine. I want to give all praises, glory, honor to you. How will Bashami me how shot double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that the most I set out to push his word out in truth, sincerity, and charity. And not just the brothers of Great Millstone, man, but all the brothers that push his word out, wherever they may be, wherever they call themselves, as long as you're preaching his word the right way, correctly and directly, as long as you write on camera, off camera, as long as you're preaching the name and the correct doctrine, a hey, you, a man of the Lord, no matter what you call yourself, camp part of a camp or not. Shalom.